into bucket. It is kept at a greater height and it is filled with water. So now I, to make the siphon effect start, I have to suck the air from this pipe so that the water will come through this pipe. We can do many modifications of this experiment. Let's understand how to explain the rotation of this straw propeller using identical equation. Actually, this is an experiment any student can do easily using this simple setup. So you can raise the height of the, you can change the height difference between the water level in the bucket and the axle of the straw by raising or lowering the bucket or raising or lowering the axle. As a result, the delta H value will change, which will change the gravitational potentiality of the water, which is going to enter the axle. And that will change the velocity of the water which is going to exit the straw filter. So if this is a simple calculation of energy. So we are neglecting the amount of water, neglecting the energy loss due to the water leaking at the axle. So neglecting that, in an ideal case, the loss in potential energy should be equal to the gain in kinetic energy of the straw sprinkler. So half i omega square is the kinetic energy rotation of kinetic energy. And so omega is 2 pi by time period. So you get this. Omega square should be proportional to the height difference from which the water fell down. So we can verify this experimentally. And this also gives you the result that 1 by time period square should be proportional to the height difference. So we did the experiment. And this is the data. We took 5 trials for each of the different heights. And when we plot the graph, when you plot the graph of mean time period versus height difference, you find that it, there is a decrease as expected. And this point seems to be an outlier because at, uh, the axle was at maximum height, that is for minimum height difference. So this is explained because there is a minimum height difference required for the water sprinkler to rotate to overcome friction. Though the theory predicted that there should be no y intercept or x intercept, but we can understand why there is an x intercept. This tells you the minimum height difference required for water to stop rotating. So if you reduce the height difference less than this, water cannot start to rotate. So the concept of time period is meaningless for that case understand why the water sprinkler has a constant angular velocity. See, if you just apply Newton's third law, okay, you would think that, okay, the, wa the water entered through the axle and it was going in a straight line like this and then it encountered this wall and it was forced to take a turn. So the wall exerted a force on the water to change its direction of motion or momentum. So by Newton's third law, water should exert an equal and opposite reaction force on this sprinkler arm and so provided a force or a torque and this since the water is coming out continuously with the same velocity there should be a continuous torque acting on the sprinkler arm causing it to accelerate we all know that tau equals i alpha so if, the, if tau is constant it should have a constant angular acceleration and yet we find that the sprinkler rotates at a constant angular velocity if the rate of uh, flow of water is fixed it has a constant angular velocity. So something is wrong in our logic of this. So the way to understand this, there is a subtle difference here. Let's understand it by imagining that there is a ball bearing which is going. That is, we want to imagine chunks of water, small chunks of water of mass m. So imagine a steel ball bearing of mass m is going from the axle like this. So initially when the the sprinkler arm was not moving, it started from rest. When the ball bearing started off from here, it did not have any angular velocity. So, angular velocity we know is omega, and angular momentum is r cross p. So, angular momentum is r cross p, where p is linear momentum, which is mv. So the velocity has to be perpendicular to the r vector direction in order to provide you the angular momentum. So when it is, so now we are seeing it from the top view, for bottom top view. 
So right now the water which was entering through the axle, when it is at the axle, there is no angular momentum, and when it is traveling through the arm also, there is no angular momentum. But then finally, when it makes a turn, then it acquires an angular momentum. So if if we consider a steel ball of mass m and it comes out with a velocity v, then it has a linear momentum of mv, and the distance from the axle is r. So you get angular momentum is r mv. So since it is in this direction, anti-clockwise direction, we will call it positive. So it has acquired an angular momentum of plus mvr. But then this is an internal system. The water initially had no momentum. The arm did not have any momentum. So angular momentum has to be conserved since no external torque is acting on it. So if the water has acquired a plus mvr by Newton's third law, the water will exert an equal opposite reaction force on it, providing an opposite angular momentum to the sprinkler body. So we have to imagine that the body mass of the sprinkler body is negligible. So and it's so its moment of inertia is also negligible. So the inertia, mass, etc., everything is of the water inside the sprinkler. So when the body is given a opposite angular momentum of uh, in the clockwise direction, we will call it minus mvr. So the overall, the sprinkler body plus water, the momentum is zero. Plus mvr and minus mvr. Now when I say minus mvr, the m here refers to the Water which is filling up this sprinkler body. So that has water which is in this arm that also gets the so this minus m is distributed inside that mass. Okay, now when now when so as a result of this, it acquires an angular momentum and it starts to rotate in the clockwise direction. Now the next instant, what happens is the mass, the next new next new ball bearing which comes out of the axle into the arm. It is now forced to move along with the sprinkler body, so it is forced to have a clockwise angular momentum. So the sprinkler body is going to exert a force and give it that angular momentum. So let us see this new mass as this red one. So it is having a clockwise angular momentum of minus m v r. So it was given that by the uh, sprinkler arm. So again, by Newton's third law, the sprinkler arm will acquire an opposite angular momentum during this stage. So you can imagine like this: the body is pushing the water this side. So by Newton's third law, the water is pushing the sprinkler body in the opposite side. So the sprinkler body acquires an anti-clockwise torque or anti-clockwise angular momentum of plus m v r when the water is going from here to here or the ball bearing is here. But once it makes a turn, again the water will get a plus m v r in this direction, giving the opposite reaction angular momentum to. Of minus m v r to the frame. So now the important point to note is, after the moment, after the sprinkler arm has acquired a constant angular momentum, okay, angular velocity, any new amount of uh, matter which comes out of the axle, while re till it reaches the end, end of the end of the axle, until it reaches the end of the arm, it is providing anti-clockwise torque to the Sprinkler arm, but once it crosses, leaves the by leaving the arm, it provides clockwise angular momentum. As a result, the total impulse which any new water which is subsequently coming into the arm and exiting throughout its journey, it gives zero total impulse. As a result, there is no change in angular momentum.